rollin', rollin', rollin'. Keep that automation going, rawhide. Yep. As you can see, I have automated the rolling machines. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Regrowth. It was a simple enough automation that I just decided to do it off screen. Single interface, all the recipes, just ingots to plates, in the chest. Logistical sorter puts them in the appropriate rolling machine. Outputs back into the interface. Uh, only exception has to be these tin plates because they require iron and none of these other rolling machine. And uh, and the system is not smart enough to know where that iron would need to go. It would expect it would like it would split it between that and iron plates. So that had to be just a separate interface. So with all those plates automated, I made. Recipes for all the factory installers. It turns out the ultimate tier is useless. It only goes up to elite. And I upgraded the smelting factory and made a crushing factory, both of them on their interfaces. Upgraded them to elite, made a full suite of upgrades for all of them, and watch how fast this will go. If I order up a couple hundred smooth stone. Just, it, it goes. It goes so fast. It takes a little while to put it all in because the interface isn't on a chest or anything, but I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. seven, seven operations in parallel running at like 10x speed of a regular furnace. Pretty dang good. So... With this lovely new suite of machines, and I'm thinking of making an automated laser table for diamond, gold, um, quartz, and iron chipsets, but I don't know. I haven't figured out quite how I want to do that yet. Anyway, with all these machines made, it's about time that we started filling out the quest book. So, let's see here. You know what the world teaches... Right now, the only quest open in here is this book that helps you turn into a vampire, I think. Well, I don't think I have to read it, so let's let's just do that. Observations of an Immortal. That's just wart, piece of garlic. Huh, I don't have any garlic in the system. Interesting. It must all be in the witchery chest, because I know that I harvested some when I was breeding it up. There it is, some garlic. And I'm going to need to kill the wither again. Okay, wither one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're nothing special. Really? Come on. I mean, you are doing damage. I think this blood armor might be actually slightly less protective than the Terra Steel set. But still, you are nothing. At least I'm getting some yellow hearts out of all this. Maybe I'll finish filling out the heart spar. Why do you always run away at first? It won't help, I'm faster than you. Now you're just gonna die tired. Really, the, the only annoying part of the wither is how much random crap you get in your inventory. I bet I can survive the explosion. Yeah, barely hurt me. There, there's a reason I usually off-screen that, because it's, it's just not a very fun fight. I mean, with how many hearts I have, maybe I could try fighting him naked. Eh. Not my fetish. Observations of an Immortal. A doomed scholar's account of discourse with the undead. Now I think the way that this works is that you fill this book out with these torn pages that occasionally drop from monsters, and it fills out the story, and if you fill it out completely and read it, it turns you into a vampire or something? I don't know. I've never done vampirism. Hmm. 
It is with some reluctance I commit these observations to paper, for what I have witnessed is not for the weak of mind. Ooh, Lovecraftian. Instead, take my words as a warning. Dot, dot, dot. He was reminiscing over dinner this evening about his birth, a demonic pact of sorts. Butchering a chicken over a skull with a bowline and holding a glass goblet to collect the blood is barbaric, I told him. Apparently, start of a long-forgotten rite, I made a sketch. Uh, night, open to the moon, string, red dust, torches, and skull. Okay. Pouring the blood, mumbling about taking her to the lakes of lava. Okay. So, I think that maybe if I craft it with these torn pages... Yeah. Well, first of all, let's... Turn in the kiss. Oh, and look at that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess that it wants me to fill out the book. The quest book specified nine pages, so let's just try that out. Yep, that is quest confirmed. And now I have literally nothing else to do in this chapter for the moment. But let's see if the book is somewhat more comprehensible now. Da, da, da. Uh, da, that's all the same. That's all the same. Ah. Today, or should I say, this evening, he told me of his first kill. The thirst that first night, he said, was overwhelming. He had to fully sate his hunger. Oh. Uh, and maybe, maybe get the kids out of the room. This sounds like it's getting erotic. He found he was able to transfix his victims, was now able to drink as he needed without others realizing, so long as he, dot, he did not drain more than half, did so from five oblivious souls. That slut. Strength was flowing into him. And other things were flowing out of him. The more he drank as the nights progressed, the stronger he became. It was on his fourth night, after his mastery of drinking, that the world slowed down. His greatest foe, the sun, was ever present, tormenting and instantly deadly to him. It's my biography. Came his obsession, found a way to collect sunlight, and burnt himself with it ten times during the night. Uh, his first brought him to bloody tears. He felt his blood burning, but no longer. Instantly, he needed more strength, and extinguishing creatures of pure fire was his solution. Twenty died. Blazes? Hmm. Smashed solid stone, but was bound to the earth. However fast, he was still limited. He called on her once more, repeating the rite of his rebirth gifted her a flower the color of the blood she so craves. He smiled, a rare event, when he told me of his first flight. He flew from village to village, until he knew the full extent of his domain. There was now nowhere he could not go. So yeah, I think this book just tells you about the perks of being a vampire. The weak-minded would now not only let him drink his fill, but would also follow like faithful hounds. Horror of all horrors, he lured five of them to specially prepared iron cages, topped with wood and with a gap at the front. He sealed them inside. He began feeding from each of them, mesmerizing them first, then carefully he drank all that he could, without damaging any. At last he knew his blood was strong enough to replicate what she had done for him. Left me weak, close to oblivion, but I watched him fill a glass goblet and hand it to me. We both sat next to a coffin, far from the sun's gaze. Drink, is all he said. So yeah, that's, that's a book. I, I guess it's kind of a hidden instruction manual for how to become a vampire with that bit talking about the ritual at first. So, teaches is done for now, enables is done for now, because I still don't know what that hidden quest is. In case you were wondering, yes, I 
did create well maybe maybe i need to load this thing up with a spawner maybe that's what i need to do let's hop into the nether real quick and let's find a, a blaze spawner or something Oof. <laughs> good thing i don't take fall damage anymore huh hey you calm down oh did you see that? That was a pretty good shot, if I do say so myself. So let's just pick that up. No? Is... Is this... Is this just... Well, damn. Okay, so with what the world enables out for now, I guess we're down to all these miscellaneous little quests in embraces. So these are just a bunch of little things that are kind of neat. Let's try out the Simulsax Transtructors. Basic one is just some iron, ender pearl, and a stick. I think what these allow you to do is. Yeah, see how it's lighting up like that? Okay, so I guess... Oh, okay. So you can build out structures kind of more easily. That's neat. I wouldn't... Eh. I don't think I'll be keeping that. It is neat, though. It is very neat. I ah, yes, Java barrels. Um, I just like drawers a lot better, so I don't really use them, but... Java barrels are the other means of vast amounts of storage. They are actually even bigger than max size drawers at their maximum size, but they are not networkable. They have no... They don't have the drawer's networking capability. But they do look pretty cool. If I... Did take some... Blocks. Fill it up. Yep. They are... They have a nice, interesting-looking UI. Very simple, easy to use. Vastly upgradable. Um... They have things called B-space barrels, where you can interlink a bunch of barrels so that they are all essentially the same barrel. And that can be useful for some things. Oh, and then it's, yep. Yeah. Okay, structural mark one, yep. Yeah. And these, these storage upgrades would just increase the size of a barrel. Um, each barrel can only hold as many slots as you have structural upgrades for, so you have to increase their tier up to however big you want to make them. And then there's void upgrades. which do the exact same damn thing as the void upgrades for storage drawers. Mm -hmm. So that is barrels in a nutshell. Okay, uh, this block painter. I think that all this is is it is a thing that allows you to um, change the appearance of the the enhanced inventories chests, and it wants me to make a paintbrush, which allows me to change the colors that they're dyed. I think. I've done a lot of decoration work in this in this playthrough, but. I think that's kind of a skippable little bit of decoration that's so small it doesn't really matter. Ah, water tanks. Simple little recipe. 
Water tanks are very early water production. If you build the structure of them, which is just like so. Yes, you see it forms up. Not only is it a pretty big water tank, but it slowly fills just on its own. I think biomatters and it fills up faster when it's raining, maybe. Oh boy. I need a crowbar to take that down. Yes, the crowbar is the railcraft tool. It's used to mess around with minecarts, and it's used for taking down some structures. There are enchantable thaumium and void steel variations from Thaumcraft. That's that's kind of neat. They can be given the repair enchant, so um, they got that going for them. Yeah, and you saw there when I was trying to right click, it was trying to act like a wrench. Ah, sprinklers. I thought that would be a quest. Yeah, I guess, I guess it would want you to link sprinklers up to a bunch of those water tanks, but you saw how slow it was filling, and sprinklers take water way faster than that. Uh, really? Oh, it wants me to make the variation of the storage drawers. So, storage drawers can have more than one slot. All the ones that I've built have just been one slot, because that gives you the largest, um, the largest amount in a single block. But... If I wanted to, I can build these ones that hold uh, two things. I'll just grab two random things. Yeah, see how they have two little slots? And each of those slots will hold half of a single slot drawer. So that can be useful. Um, they go up to four slots. That can be useful if you're storing a lot of things that are just like... Um, I don't know, if you have a bunch of tools, that can be useful for storing them. But no, for most things I want bulk. Oh, and there's a bunch of little four slots. Oh wow, oh that, that, that opened it right up. Oh my goodness. Uh, yep, drawer upgrades, you've seen me do that before. Okay. Uh, compacting drawers, drawer network controllers, and apparently regular dolly was also a quest, and there's that diamond dolly quest. Uh, pick one. Okay. I'll just, um, I'll keep that on hand, I guess. Okay, uh, seed storage. Seed storage is frankly crappy. There we go, hopefully it'll accept a spruce one. Yes, it do. Okay, so these are for agricraft seeds. And you'd think that would be really cool, but the thing is each of these seed storages only stores one type of seed. So if I load it up with these melon seeds, that's great and all. It, it has it in there. But, I mean, I, I don't want to just store one type of seed. I mean, it's good for when you're breeding, I guess, because then you have all the various, you know, the different tiers of melon seeds. But, I mean, you saw how I did that. I, I, I basically didn't stop until I had them full, and I was composting as I went. So there is no reason for me to use this. Goodbye. Uh, compartments. Compartments are actually kind of neat, but I don't know. I just don't like them as much as having my chests actually sorted. There we go. Compartment. These are basically slightly bigger uh, searchable chests. So if I get a bunch of Items, I don't know, book, some of that, some of that. Fill it out a little bit. 
I can search by name, like, um, I can configure tabs that only include items from certain mods. So I could have this thing really sorted and nice, but I mean, uh, yeah. and, and I think that they actually do get pretty big. This diamond compartment here, I think would be the equivalent of like the tier three or four chest. But I, I don't know. I just didn't really use them. Okay, a waypoint compass. This thing works with the atlas, which I guess I threw out. Wait, what's that? Atlas moth? Huh, neat. Anyway. Yeah, you see it's just a regular compass and some gold. If I still had my atlas, I could program this thing to point at a waypoint, and it would always point at that waypoint. So I could say, have a waypoint to home, and, I, and this compass would always point home. And I guess it just gave me a couple of those. Okay, and then it wants me to make the Master Infusion Stone. That is going to be a little bit of resource gathering. And you see it's all four types of stone, so I have to make yet another set of those. It's one of each type of essence, and then it's all the top tier essences. Okay. This will probably be the most expensive bit of rune crafting in the entire pack. So I upgraded my spreaders to their final form, the Gaia Mana Spreaders. These are made just by taking those Dreamwood spreaders and upgrading them with a bit of Gaia Spirit and a Dragonstone. These are all, of course, with potency velocity lenses. So this is the ultimate mana infusion system first against the ultimate mana cost. Let us see. I need a living rock. Let us see which one wins. Well, other than me, of course. Wom. Yeah. Okay, the Master Infusion Stone. This is kind of a bonus stone. You see I can take the dust. And I can do Weak Essence. I can do Regular. I can do that, and I can do that. Yep, not that special. Lot of trouble. And I already have Essence automated anyway. But hey, it's a quest. Pretty little heart-shaped thing. And that is what the world embraces done. Now next would be encoding, and that would be bees. I don't feel like bees. Not right now. So let's make some animals. Well, actually, first, let's make those remaining two seeds. Okay, so I need cinder pearl and shimmer leaf. These, I both believe, are made in the crucible out of some amber. And some quicksilver. That's all really easy. Yeah, I think I have everything in storage for it. Okay, these are just little special special thomcraft seeds. I don't think cinder pearls are really used for anything. Let's see here. Yeah, the only thing they're used for is making some blaze powder. And they can be burned into foul fumes apparently interesting shimmer leaf however well first of all that is bred crossbred with shimmer leaf to, in order to make these taint roots but the shimmer leaf crop um, is an alternate way of getting quicksilver 
and it's used for making these ethereal blooms, which are used for cleaning up taint if ever you screw up bad enough to make taint. And they're also used in a couple of recipes. Yeah, these primordial helms, stuff like that. So shimmer leaf is actually potentially useful. And um, yeah, I saw that they were crossbred into this taint root, which I imagine will be another quest. And this taint root is just used for getting taint tendrils, which uh, can be mana infused into the other tainted goo stuff. And um, these are normally things that you would find in monsters that have been tainted. They're used for a couple of dark magic things. They're a source of Visium Essentia, um, which is used for more dark magic things. Yeah. I don't know. Not really that useful because Taint is kind of a pain to deal with. Anyway, I will just be breeding those up off screen and then I will have to crossbreed them to the Taint route and that will just be a bunch of time sink. Okay, so next up, the section of life of the world for all the animals. Kind of have to get them back into the world. And these unlock a lot of quests elsewhere, which I think these are these are witchery quests for animals that are mutated from these, but still, I probably should have done these sooner. That's just egg experience and some fish and some gunpowder. And a raw cod. So... Yeah, it looks like it accepts any type of fish. There we go. And see, that was practically instant. You know what? I think it's time I made a living rock automation. It's really simple and easy, and I've been putting it off. So... <clears throat> first thing is, we're going to need a couple recipes for formation and annihilation plane. Okay, just put those in the system. Formation planes will place items from the ME net. Annihilation planes will suck them back in and deconstruct them. And I mean, they will they will actually construct and deconstruct blocks like a stripey pipe. And I think I'm going to do this a really simple and easy way. So I'm going to need seven of each. And I'm going to need an ME interface, a chest... You know what? Let's make it a better chest. Let's finally automate better chests. Okay, chest. And then I'm just going to need a bunch of Fluix cable. I said a bunch of Fluix cable. I guess I note that I changed the um, I changed the recipe from crushed certus to crushed nether, qu nether quartz, just because it's easier to mass produce nether quartz. And I do in fact have uh, nether quartz dust on autocraft sent to that crushing factory. So I essentially have AE mostly autocrafting. Oh yes, and we're going to need some green cable just to connect it into our Batania network downstairs. Not strictly... Oh yes, and also I am going to need one of these pure daisies. A bit of dirt. Actually, yeah, a bit of dirt. But let's grab and just replace a piece of grass. Because I'm going to use something I got from one of my farming runs of the Gaia Guardian 2. I'm going to use an overgrowth seed. This overgrowth seed when used on a piece of grass, will turn it into enchanted soil, which will make it so that passive plants like day blooms and hydroangias no longer decay over time, and all um, flowers work twice as fast. So, let's just do this, I don't know, right over here. And have that right on down there. Now note that I'm only clearing out seven blocks instead of all eight surrounding it. That's because I'm doing this the lazy way. Remember how I said that by default applied energistics networks allow up to 
up to eight devices on a network? Well, I'm doing that here. I'm just going to take these seven chest in the Santar. Let's put down our overgrowth. You know, see that lovely enchanted soil and the pure daisy. And actually, I'm going to have to clear out the space underneath this. So then I am going to need an import bus. On the bottom. And that is the eighth device. So we have a fully a fully valid maximized cheapo ME network here. Eight devices, seven formation planes, and an import bus. On the top side of that, well let's let's put the ME interface right here. And that will be where items come in and also where power comes in. In order to get power without making it part of the same network, I am just going to use some quartz cable, just like so. This will only transfer AE power without transferring channels. So now when I link this ME interface up, the formation planes will have power. Next up, I need a storage bus. Really? I have an automated storage buses? Okay. Really simple and easy to make. Well, at least it's really easy and simple when you have applied energistics to do it for you. Okay, gonna have my storage bus on there, and oh yes, I forgot. I need living rock and a bit of living wood. Just gonna put these on here, and this will tell this storage bus I'm not sure what what achievement that was. This will tell the storage bus that it only accepts living rock and living wood. So then I just take my cables over the top. And remember that storage bus is taking one channel. And these seven annihilation planes will take up the remaining seven. Now, the thing about annihilation planes is they will only play they will only suck up items if they have a place to store it. So they will be attempting they will regard this ME interface with a storage bus as a storage as a destination for storage meaning they will put into it and therefore it'll get sucked back out into the network. Because this storage bus is programmed, they will only pick up living wood and living rock and they won't pick up the regular old uh, wood and stone that is put down. So in other words, the formation plane will suck anything out of the chest that the interface puts into it. So it'll suck out the stone and wood. It'll be placed around this pure daisy by the formation planes. It'll then wait until it transforms, be sucked up by the Annihilation Planes, and put back into the network. That is a simple, easy automation for Living Rock and Living Wood. And there we go. We see the Formation Planes lighting up. And can that storage bus transfer electricity? It says Device Offline, so no, it can't. That's okay. Um, that is what Quartz Cable's for. So just yet again, need to, I'll just do it off this side. There we go. 
And that's all those devices online. Now let's give it a test. So I'm just going to tell it one stone, oops, processing mode, one stone to one living stone, and one spruce log to one living wood. Gonna put these patterns in this pattern chest, hide that terminal. And now I should be able to bulk order. No? Oh! You know what it is? This green cable isn't part of the network proper, it's, it's on the P2P line. So it was getting power, but no channels. That's an easy fix. There we go. Had to actually take it off the dense cable where those channels are being unpacked. Okay. Now that should be part of the main network proper. Yes, there we go. So if I order a bunch of living rock, I heard a clunk. There it goes. Oh, it's moving slow because by default, ME import buses are very slow. I need some acceleration cards. There's that import bus. There we go. Now it should be at max speed. Okay, and now whenever I order Living Rock, it will just process automatically. There we go. So let's finally make this Ocelot. Mm -hmm. I think I will actually keep that in egg form for a little while until I figure out if I want to use it for something. So next up, spawn wolf. That's just some um, beef and some bones, okay. I might have some beef. Yep. I accidentally killed a cow at one point. Doop, 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 doop. Wolves. about uh, bats? Bats? Bats I might actually want to do something with. Because I need crap tons of this wool of bat for witchery. Um, it's used to make special gaseous potions that I think I might want to make for a boss at one point. Okay, so it's going to need brown dye, wool, feather, egg. Okay? Oh yeah. Uh, cocoa beans are just made by tossing regular seeds into the into the alchemy catalyst pool. There we go, spoon bat. Yeah, for this, I might actually want to program a crystal for a wrath cage so that I can farm these guys. So let me show you how you do that. Um, in order to make a spawning crystal to program a wrath cage, you take this Diabolist fork, which is... I can't actually view the recipe. That's interesting. It is from Forbidden Magic. This is all from Forbidden Magic. It is just a very simple infusion, a thomium sword, some quartz, and some... yeah. And you need to make a memory crystal which is, I believe, just a diamond that has been alchemied up. There it is. Blank and printing crystal. A zoop. So, you keep the imprinting crystal in your inventory, and then when you kill a monster with the Diabolist fork, it will imprint upon the crystal. Come back here. Gotcha. Yes. And you see here that it says Volatus. 
that is the type of Essentia that is necessary in order to make the Wrath Cage spawn that. It can also be powered with Ira or Decidia. Okay, pigs. Pigs are next. Okay, that's one of each mushroom, some carrots, and okay. Pigs! Two wool, two wheat, an egg. Sheep. Pieces of eight? Uh, spiders. Why would I want to make spawn eggs for monsters? If I want to spawn monsters, I will just imprison them in a wrath cage. <sighs> okay, fine. Spider. Okay. Yeah, even the quest is doubting why I'm doing this. Why would he want to deal with even more bugs? Silverfish. I don't know. It's 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 the quest. It's not me. Obviously, I'd never make these on my own. At least this one's kind of cute because um, creepers were made because of a uh, a bug with. The animation system for pigs, I think. Where did my experience drops go? So that's a little bit of, I don't know, history lesson. Two of these slime crystals. That's made from slimy mud. That's just slime and... Yeah. There we go. Slime. Emeralds. Wheat, potato, carrot. Okay. I guess I could set up a village, but I don't know, Millinaire is going to be more fun for that. Okay. Bow, arrow, bone block. Skull candle. Um, okay. Bone block. This looks kind of crap. Oh, wow. The texture didn't even load for a while. Yeah. I think the, uh... I think the bone stone that I made the altar out of is... Is a better... Is a better human body building material here. Okay, so what are these candles? Okay. Mm-hmm. Bone skeleton. These blocks of flesh are what flesh golems are made out of, in case you were wondering. Okay. Zombos. And now I imagine I'm going to have to make more villagers to make those witches. Okay, so... Those witch eggs... are indeed... It's a villager egg, splash potion of poison, a witch's hand. Those are actually kind of rare. And some sugar. Okay. So that's a 33 second potion. I don't think that's lengthened or anything. Yeah, that's just awkward spider eye and gunpowder. Okay. Thankfully, I actually have a couple witch's hands saved up. Brewing stands are so slow. Okay, there we go. Spawn witch. Spawn Fallen Knight. It never ends. How close are we? I have the world almost complete. Okay. Skeleton plus zombie plus Wither Skull Candle. Okay. There we go. Whoo, boy. Okay, that's... That is all that. Between episodes, I will breed up those those taint seeds. And that, I think, will complete the life of the world. So, that is some good, solid advancement in most of the drudge work quests that we've done today. 
I think from here on, it should be pretty much just doing more interesting things. So we kind of, we, we did the video game equivalent of eating our vegetables today. It's all dessert from here. I hope you still had fun watching me do a little bit of the boring stuff. See you later.